Recently, I got a comment on one of my videos and this is how it started. Please, please, please do not use any spot on or any other flea treatments. They are toxic organophosphate poisons and I do not think you would be willing to use them on yourself. I had a cat become completely paralyzed within 24 hours of one of these things and another cat lost all his hair and was chronically ill for life. Obviously, the commenter had a horrible experience with some flea treatment and their cat got sick and they're concerned about my cats and other people's cats. So I'm not criticizing this comment, but I think that there's a lot of information that's confusing about flea treatments. And I wondered what the risks really are for the different types of treatments. Some people claim that the pharmaceutical industry is simply trying to make money and pushing out dangerous products. Others are promoting natural cures or different kinds of foods in order to prevent fleas in your cats. So I have many questions. Are flea treatments safe? Are the problems due to human error? Are the toxins that are used actually a problem for cats? Do natural remedies actually work? Are some cats more sensitive to toxins? Most dog flea treatments have a toxin called pyrethrin. So do not ever give dog flea treatment to a cat because it's probably the surest way of having your cat poisoned by a flea treatment. My name is Francisco and on this channel I work with my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall and Mr. Muffin to help you improve the lives of your indoor cats. Now here's a caveat, I am not a vet. The information I'm sharing in this video is things that I have researched and my opinion. I will be linking the sources that I used in the description below. And if you have any information or opinion that you would like to share about the things that I say, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. Now, even if your cats never go outside, you can still have a flea problem. Fleas can ride in on you, they can ride in on other pets, they can come in through unscreened windows and in other ways. And I think it's important to note that fleas are not just an irritation that cause your pets to scratch. Fleas can also carry disease. For example, Bartolinosis. It's a bacterial infection that cats can get from eating flea poop. I know, it's gross. But it can cause mouth and gum disease, it can cause eye irritation, and some veterinarians think it might even be causing heart disease. Some cats are also very allergic to flea saliva, and they can get an allergic reaction called flea allergy dermatitis. It's an immune reaction that can cause skin infections and hair loss. Your cat can get tapeworms by eating a flea that has tapeworms. Enough said about that. So it's not just a comfort issue. Don't forget that in 14th century Europe, the Black Death spread by fleas. Now, there are many ways to control fleas, uh, from combing them to using pesticides or insecticides of some sort. Nobody objects to combing your cat, but there is a lot of controversy regarding the insecticides that are used on fleas. Let's cut to the chase. Are flea medicines toxic? The short answer is yes. Flea medicines are made with toxins to kill fleas, and they are very good at what they do. They also kill eggs and larvae, uh, preventing flea infestation in the future. The real question is, do these toxins affect your cat, and how much do they affect your cat? For the most part, the toxins in flea medications are aimed at invertebrates, and they will not affect your cat if they are used properly. But I know that I'm going to get a lot of comments from people who have had adverse experience with their cats using flea medications. And I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about that. Common brands of flea medications in the United States include things like Advantage, Revolution, Frontline, Sentry. They use different toxins that act on the target in different ways and it cannot be summarized very easily. The pros are that they work very quickly and are easy to apply. But on some cats, they irritate the skin and if they are licked off or ingested when they are still wet, they can be highly toxic. So if your cat is prone to skin irritation, topical treatments might not be the best for your cat. Now I will say that this is for the most part because some cats can get seriously ill from these kinds of medications. First, before starting any flea treatment, consult with your vet to make sure that your cat has no conditions that might make certain toxins more problematic for your cat. Secondly, follow the instructions on the packaging. It's very important that you have the right medicine for the right species, for the right weight, for the right age of your cat. Apply it carefully and as instructed. 
And if it spreads or you spill some, make sure to clean it up thoroughly. If your cats groom each other, make sure to keep them separate until the medicine is fully absorbed. And that means usually fully dry. And there are some toxins that have been proven to be particularly problematic. Organophosphates, which the commenter I quoted at the beginning mentioned. They have been banned in many countries, but if you're not sure if your country has banned them, make sure to check the labeling. I also want to mention that the cats were kept together and one of them licked the medicine off the other cat's back. So it was partly human error. Now, some cats will have a reaction when you use a topical medicine. So uh, watch them after you apply the medicine to see if that they are okay or how they're reacting to it. Also check the spot where you apply it to see if there's any kind of irritation, any kind of rash or any kind of hair loss on that spot. In some cases, you might wanna change from a topical treatment to a pill that they can take internally, but make sure to consult with your vet before you do that. Also be attentive if you switch brands because your cat might be okay with one toxin, but less okay with a different toxin. And it's hard to keep up with all the brands and all the different toxins that they use. And in my opinion, never use flea collars. Have you smelled those things? Can you imagine being a cat and having that kind of smell attached to your neck without being able to get it off? Don't forget the cat's sense of smell is 40 times stronger than ours. In addition, those flea collars have been known to cause hair loss and allergic reaction because they are wrapped around the same place for the whole month that you use them. But if you do not want to use a chemical insecticide in the form of medicine on your cats, there are other options. One of those is diatomaceous earth. This is a silica powder made from fossilized diatoms and is very common in nature. When sprinkled in areas that fleas are present, they will dehydrate them and kill them. It is more of a general insecticide and unlike the, the flea treat medicines, they act on all the insects around instead of just on fleas on your cat. Here's a summary also from the journal on insect science on diatomaceous earth. The inhaled particles accumulate in the bronchi, pulmonary alveoli, I hope I said that right, lung tissue and lymph nodes and are not eliminated from the body. So you have to be careful with diatomaceous earth. You don't want to breathe it or have your pets breathe it because by breathing it into your lungs, it can also cause irritation into your lungs and other problems. So what do you want to do? You want to avoid breathing it in and kicking it up as a dust. Avoid fans, avoid vacuuming uh, near where you put it, avoid putting it near vents and other ways of distributing the diatomaceous earth around your house. So what about natural remedies? They are usually made with a recipe of essential oils, including things like lavender, peppermint, cedar wood, and other uh, products that are known to repel fleas. From what I have read, not many studies have been done on these types of natural flea treatments about how concentrated they need to be to actually repel or, or kill the fleas and how that concentration might affect your cat. Let me give you one example, which is peppermint oil. In concentrated amounts, it will kill and repel fleas, but in concentrated amount, it will also be toxic to cats. Because of the lack of rigorous testing, what is unclear is where the boundaries are. How much do you actually need to repel and kill fleas and how much is actually gonna be damaging to your cat? Here's a quote from the Spruce Pets website. According to the Pet Poison Hotline, cats are especially at risk for peppermint toxicity since they metabolize differently than dogs. Cats have been reported to experience drooling, vomiting, tremors, and seizures, difficulty walking and breathing, stomach ulcers, low body temperature, low blood pressure, rear limb, paral par rear limb paralysis, skin irritation, and even liver and kidney failure, depending on how the oil was used. So just because a product is natural does not necessarily mean it's safe. Plants create all kinds of toxins to keep insects from eating them. And sometimes these poisons can also have an effect on your pets. So you need to be just as careful when using or making a natural remedy as you would be when you are using a pharmaceutical solution like a store-bought flea treatment. So here are some suggestions. First, use a proven recipe. Follow the advice of your vet. Research it carefully and watch your pet after you apply it. 
Now, if you have more current information or know of studies that have uh, been done on natural remedies, please leave a comment below. Now, one possible solution that avoids most of these problems are flea traps. Unfortunately, flea traps are shown not to be very effective. One study I read said that it killed about 12% of the fleas and they do not eliminate the larvae or the eggs. Now, the safest way to get rid of fleas is mechanical. You remove the fleas physically without using any type of insecticide. This system works if you do not have a major infestation, if you have the time to do it, and if your cat has the patience to tolerate that kind of intensive combing. You can comb out the fleas from your cat's fur, but it requires a systemic approach and concentration, especially because the fleas can bury very deeply into a cat's fur and they will also jump out if you get too close. You want to pay special attention to the area around the cat's neck and around its tail. Fleas are very sturdy, so you want to dip the comb into soapy water to prevent them from jumping out and drown them. Now, if your cat has a lot of fleas, you might want to start with a bath. They do make flea shampoos, but that brings us back to the toxicity issue. So if you don't want to use that, you can use baby uh, shampoo, or some people um, think that Dawn is a great product. But if you do bathe your cat, make sure to rinse very thoroughly because you do not want your cat ingesting any part of that shampoo that you put on it. You also don't want to do it too often because it will dry out your cat's skin. And bathing a cat is difficult. It takes a lot of energy to try to keep the cat controlled, and of course it stresses out when you do it. The only exception there is kittens, which tend to be a lot more submissive. But if any flea control solution is going to be permanent, it also means that you're going to have to do a lot of vacuuming and a lot of washing. Fleas, their eggs, their larvae uh, are present in cat beds, in bedding, in furniture, and in the places generally where your cats hang out. These places need to be vacuumed multiple times, and any kind of bedding that they use in these places needs to be washed thoroughly. Now, if your infestation is dramatic, or if you have an indoor-outdoor cat or a dog that regularly brings in fleas, then you might have to resort to one of the other solutions, which is more controversial. But one of the biggest problems is actually giving cats dog flea medicine. According to some veterinarians and the ASPCA, some of the most common poisonings they see in cats are caused by dog flea medicine. Most dog flea treatments have a toxin called pyrethrin or pyrethroids, which have a variety of active ingredients. So do not ever give dog flea treatment to a cat. And if you have treated your dog, make sure that your cat is, stays far away from it, especially if they play together or if your cat likes to groom the dog, because it's probably the surest way of having your cat poisoned by, by a flea treatment. Signs that your cat has been poisoned by pyrethrin can appear in one to 12 hours, and they include the following, tremors, seizures, vomiting, and difficulty breathing. So if you see any of these signs in your cat after you've given your dog flea treatment, take your cat to the emergency vet as soon as possible. So I don't want to leave you in a quandary as to what to do. I mean, everything seems to be problematic in some way or another. And unfortunately, that's the case. But here are some thoughts that I have, and here's my final opinion on the issue. First, use the least toxic method you can for your situation, and that will depend on how much of an infestation you have. Wash and vacuum as much as possible and let that mechanical cleaning out of the fleas be your primary control method. Consult with your vet before using any new flea treatments on your cats. Follow the instructions on the packaging. Make sure that you are being rigorous about that. Do not be sloppy with that. Don't let your cats lick it off. Don't let them lick it off each other. Don't let them lick it off other pets. And watch your cats to see if there's any negative or adverse reaction after you have given them the treatment. It might require you to switch to a different brand or to a different method of flea treatment. I hope you found this summer useful. It's now summertime and fleas are everywhere. If you did, please like and subscribe. It'll help share this information with other people. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next